Okay guys, um, I'm gonna continue with our um, outside lectures. Um, so let's go ahead and dive into chapter six. Chapter six is what um, I consider one of our smaller um, chapters in this unit. It's on implementation and evaluation. So implementation um, is very, very important. The, uh, the registered nurse implements the um, identified plan. Of course, we've been speaking about that. Implementing care for several patients require organization. There are two types of tasks. There's the time flexible task and there's the time fixed task. When we say time flexible task, these can be done at any time. For example, if the order says, take vital signs scheduled for once a day. Now a timed fixed is when we say that it should be done at a scheduled time. So like it needs to be done at the same time for everybody. An example of that is scheduled medication. Please make sure that you note box 6-1. It is the NFLMP nursing practice standards. It is regarding implementation and evaluation. Also, I want you to read safety alert 6-1. Um, and that is regarding IV fluid orders, okay? Nurses must use critical thinking skills to plan their day and design a good work plan for their day. Remembering that emergencies can and will interrupt um, your, your normal scheduled things. Now when we're implementing care, we're implementing uh, care following the assessment, the nursing diagnosis and planning. The phase of the nursing process is which nursing actions or the orders are carried out. Reason and rationale should be identified before carrying out interventions. Change of shift report should be um, clues as to the priority of each action to be implemented. So once the, they tell you what's been kind of going on at change of shift, that'll give you some clues on what you're gonna do. Some interventions may require an independent nursing action. These are not required by a physician's order. The care plan is not a part of the patient's chart if a clinical pathway is being used as the guide for the patient's care. Now considerations for care delivery are these. The reason for the intervention, the rationale for the intervention, the standard of care, uh, which referred to the facility's nursing policy and procedure manual on that, the expected outcomes, which is the same as goals, any potential dangers, and time required to complete the intervention. Now let's talk about some nursing actions. They must be appropriate actions and is expected to help the patients meet their goals more quickly. Type of actions are independent nursing actions, dependent nursing actions, and interdependent nursing actions. Now let's describe those. Independent nursing actions do not require a physician's order. They do require critical thinking. Some examples of that are teaching a patient about their diet related to his disease state, such as a diabetic, or restarting an IV when the patient's site appears reddened or um, non-functioning. And another uh, nursing independent action could be something as simple as a back rub. Now let's talk about what dependent nursing action is. These do require a nursing, uh, I'm sorry, a physician's order. An example of a dependent nursing action is uh, administering a medication that is ordered daily, inserting a Foley catheter or a nasogastric tube, removal of any sutures, stage, um, sutures, staples, 
or um, anything else like that from a surgical site. Now let's talk about what an independent, interdependent action is. This is an action that comes from collaboration of care, planning, nursing actions. Actions that come from collaborative care planning may be documented in a critical pathway or on a care map for your patient. They are a multidisciplinary approach to patient's care and a step-by-step -step approach to patient's care. That is what interdependent actions are. You must know the difference between independent actions and dependent actions all of them, independent, dependent, interdependent. Know the difference. Know all types. Now, continuing on with implementing care. Review the fa uh, facilities policy and procedure manual. You must do this prior to performing the procedure. This is the first thing you should always do before performing any procedure, even when it is ordered by a physician. Students are expected to perform at the same standard of care designed in the manual when performing a procedure at said facility. Consider the interventions that can be grouped together. For example, performing a range of motion while doing the bed bath and making the occupied bed. All three of those things can be grouped together. You can save some time and you will eliminate going in and out of your patient's room um, you know, to do these skills or these tasks. You will appear much more efficient. Plan and organize your care before beginning. So when you guys see nurses sitting at the um, nursing station, a lot of times they are planning after they've gotten report. Make sure that you read box 6-2, okay, in your book. Now let's talk about steps for a nursing procedure. You will want to verify what your procedure is going to be, gather your supplies and your equipment, introduce yourself to your patient, check the patient's ID, even if you know them. Now let me say something about that real quick. In the elderly facility, that is their home. They are not walking around with armbands on their arms, okay? So it is always best for you to verify who that patient is prior to doing any task on that patient. If they cannot speak to you or, you know, you must have the nurse that that's their patient to verify who you're going to and who this patient really is. Also, they have pictures of these patients on their charts as well. So I do suggest that you go and you look at those pictures to make sure that you are identifying the correct patient. Explain your procedure to them. Close the curtain or the doors for privacy. Raise up the bed to working height. Put on your protective uh, clothing, your PPE, if it's appropriate for your task. Uh, mentally review your task, what you're about to do. Perform the procedure. After that, Dispose of any used material. Make your patient comfortable. Make sure that you put that bed all the way down and you give them their call light. And then document the procedure and how the patient tolerated the procedure in your chart. Now we wanna make sure that when we uh, lower the bed and we give them the call light and things like that, we want to make sure um, that we are following the policy and procedures of that facility when it comes to bed rails. If you guys remember, no, you cannot put up all the bed rails. That is a restraint. We don't do that anymore, okay? Some facilities don't have any bed rails at all. Some facilities will allow one bed rail up so that the patient can help maneuver themselves. So you need to know what the policy and procedure is on said bed rails. Now let's talk about collaborative care, clinical pathways. Some agencies use clinical pathways, multidisciplinary approach to managing patient care. The pathways are used by various health professionals. Please make sure you know that. 
multidisciplinary approach to managing patient care. Pathways are used by various health professionals. Okay, underline it, highlight it. Next, an outgrowth of managed care still uses the nursing process, but used instead of the nursing care plan. We're talking about collaborative care, which are clinical pathways. They are usually standardized to a medical diagnosis and customized to each patient. And the pathways are managed care tools used to decrease a patient's recovery time. Now let's move on to talk about LTCs, which are what? We just talked about that. LTCs are what? Long-term care, delegation in a long-term care facilities, uh, we're going to talk about exercise interventions, medication by the uh, that may be administered by the LBNs, and we're going to speak about the nurse performs an invasive or sterile procedure, which are what LBNs can do depending on your um, policy and procedures. Now, in a long-term care facility, most routine care is delegated to the nursing assistants, just the routine care. Exercise interventions are usually performed by physical therapy aids or restorative aids. That does not mean that you, the nurse, will not be attempting and doing them as well. Medication may be administered by LBNs or nursing assistants with certifications. And when I say that, I mean med assistants for medication administration in some states. The nurse performs any invasive or sterile procedures. Please make sure that you look up assignment considerations. That is under a purple heading so that you'll know who you can assign what to. Now let's talk about home health. In home health, the family may be implementing the interventions for you. In home health, the nurse makes home visits and they do the teaching to enable the family to administer their medication for the patient, change the dressings for the patient, perform range of motions for the patient, and to perform any other treatments that may need to be done inside the home. Now, let's talk documentation a bit more. Documentation is done to indicate that the NCP has been done. And that is the nursing care plan. Some examples, medication administration, dressing changes, vital signs measured, uh, must all be listed there. Procedures not documented are considered not performed. And we know for a fact that's not 100% true, but in the eye of the law, it is. If it's not documented, it was not done. Routine items such as baths, ambulation, eating, may be documented on checklists or flow sheets, depending on your facility. Now, let's move on to evaluation. Once the interventions have been implemented, they must be evaluated for their effectiveness and reaching the patient's goals or outcomes. Remember goals, outcomes, doo -doo -doo, same thing. If the goals or outcomes are not being reached, the plan must be revised. A continuous process is what we do when we're evaluating. If the goals are reached and the problem is resolved, it is evaluated, signed off in uh, the nurse's notes as met and removed from the plan of care. Examples of goals being reached, if the patient ambulates from bed to chair, with assistance on the second day post-op, then that goal, if that was listed as a goal, has been reached. So we would then revise the care plan and implement another goal for the patient to ambulate independently. Now on ANA standard number six, which talks about evaluation, the registered nurse evaluates progress towards attainment of the outcomes. And she does need input from her LVN in order to do so. 
Interventions result in expected outcomes and require nursing diagnose, uh, di documentation supporting that outcome. Expected outcomes not being met will require a revision of the plan of care and documentation of the change of that plan. We document if it's being done or if it's, um, and if it's not, if it's helping or if it's not. That's what I really was trying to say. Now let's talk about uh, quality improvement. So quality management, each facility is required to evaluate nursing practice in the facility. Outcome-based quality improvements, which we call the um, OBQIs. OBQI stands for Outcome-Based Quality Improvements. It's used to monitor nursing care delivered and evaluates its effectiveness. And this is done in every department of the hospital. Nursing audits are performed on each unit as part of the process. Examination of a series of patient records to see if the nursing care for those particular patients are being met as standard. It is important to do this to maintain hospital accreditation. The JCO um, uses the standard form that the nurse department used to audit. The goal of quality management is to improve nursing practice and patient's care. Please see box 6-3 when we talk about constructing a nursing care plan. For constructing a nursing care plan, you're gonna first collect data from the patient for a database, analyze the database for potential problems, choose an appropriate nursing diagnosis. Then we're gonna rank the nursing diagnoses in order of priority. Make sure we remember we're gonna use the Maslow's, okay? Plan of care by defining goals and or expected outcomes. Please make a note of this, highlight it, draw some arrows and some stars. If a revision of the care plan is needed, the student and or the LVN must first report the findings to the charge nurse, which is the RN. Often completed and entered into a computer or written in a nursing note. Now, the last thing is, because we've done one through five, let's do six through eight for constructing a nursing care plan. The sixth thing is we're gonna plan nursing care by choosing appropriate nursing interventions. Number seven, implement the nursing intervention. Number eight, evaluate the actual outcome of each nursing intervention, determine whether progress toward achieving the expected out goals has been made. Please look in your book. There is an example. Um, there's a sample care plan in there. And we will do sample care plans um, in one of our clinical days as well, coming up soon. Okay? Now remember I told you guys, chapter six was very small. We are done with chapter six. Y'all know Miss Williams is always cold, but the sun is shining and I'm still cold out here, y'all. Bye-bye.